Welcome to the Gorilla 5 video series. In this lesson, we're going to learn part two more about managing elements. Some of the things we're going to go over are how to attach pictures to elements, how to link elements together, and how to cast cast members to elements using the element manager. Now in Gorilla, from the Gorilla toolbar, make sure you are in the scheduling module and select the elements button to take you to the element manager window. Now on the left hand side of the screen, I'm going to select a, an element. I'm going to select costumes and then hat. So that hat appears here on the top so we can see that it is selected. Now in the previous lessons, remember we went over the info tab and the scenes tab. Now in this lesson, we're going to go over the art gallery tab and the linked elements tab. So let's go ahead and select the art gallery tab. Now in order to attach a picture to this particular element, I'm going to select this green button down here, this green add button where it says import a picture for this element. And from my hard drive, I'm going to select a hat. Uh, of course, you can select anything you want. You can select a JPEG or a PNG file. And notice that it appears here. Uh, and one thing to note, I'm going to do it again to do another hat. Uh, the, the image should be fairly small. Make sure that when you do create your image and save it, you save it for the web. Notice this image is only 4K beads, very, very small. The larger the image is, if you try to put in, you know, something that you export directly from iPhoto, it's going to be a very large image. So you want to scale it down for sure, because the larger the image is, the more room it's going to take up on your hard drive. I'm, I'm sorry, the more uh, space it's going to take in Gorilla and slow down Gorilla. So notice I've attached three pictures now to this particular element. Now using the image selector down here, I can toggle through my elements. Okay, I can put in a description if I want here. And some more notes here. Now anything that you put here will print out on an art department report. It'll print out um, the element, all the pictures attached to the elements. You will have an option to do that when you print. In fact, let me show that to you really quickly. If I click on File Print, and I'm going to select, um, let's see here, an art department report. Notice that there's an info button right here. This allows you, and when you see this on reports, allows you to um, customize some of the print options. Now here, notice it'll say print elements with images only or print large images. Uh, so if I, right now this is turned off. So if I turn this on, this will print elements with images. And if I turn it off, it will print elements without images. So that's important to note. Now, in order to remove an element from, uh, I'm sorry, remove a picture from an element, you go ahead and select that element in the uh, a picture in the element, uh, in the image selector. I'm sorry. There we go. And now select the red X here. And it'll give you a warning that you're about to delete this picture. And of course, you can select another element picture in the image selector. So that's how you add pictures to elements. The next thing I want to show you is the linked elements tab. And what linking elements allows you to do is simply that, link elements together. So let's go ahead from the category navigator here. I'm going to select a, a cast member, Barney, and I'm going to select the linked elements tab. And notice here I have two portals here. I have a one on the left that says Barney's groups and one here that says linked elements next to it. Now what exactly is a linked element? I'm going to click on this little info button here. And this is going to uh, explain to us exactly what element linking is. Element linking allows you to link elements together in groups. And then you can attach that group to a breakdown sheet. And all those elements will be attached to that breakdown sheet. So let me go ahead and close this and show you exactly how it's done. In order to create a group, we're going to click on this green button here. And by default, when you create that button, it's going to give you the name of the element and then group at the end of it. Um, and that's fine if you only have one group, but if you have multiple groups, you don't want them to all say the name of the element group. So I'm going to uh, customize this group name. And click OK. Now I've created a group here. Now on the right hand side, I can link elements to this particular group. Now in order to do that, you select or click on this green add button in the second portal here. And now what I'm going to do 
is select a couple of elements to add to this group. I'm going to select from the props category the plunger and let's move this out of the way so you can see that it is added to the group here and let's go ahead and select the hat that we just added a picture to and notice here that I've got two linked elements attached to this group and I'll show you exactly why that's important. Now notice also another thing I want to point out there's a green add button here so if I want to add a particular uh, element to this group that I don't have that's not created for example let's say I wanted to add overalls to the Barney the Plumber group um, notice in costumes I don't have overalls I can click this green add button and then add overalls to this list and then click on oh I do have overalls I'm sorry let's say something else for, for example I could do that and then on the fly add elements immediately to my linked elements group okay so let's go ahead and close that up so now what I'm going to do, note, remember that Barney the Plumber has two linked elements, plunger and hat. So let's go ahead and close this. Now I'm going to go to the breakdown sheet screen. Now notice that the uh, link, there's a little chain link here next to uh, this element Barney. This wasn't there before. That means that when I click on this arrow here to add Barney to my breakdown sheet, not only is Barney going to be added to the sheet, but so are the two elements, the two linked elements that we added, plunger and hat. Okay, if I do that again, if I go to another scene, let's say scene five, and add Barney, let's try it again. Notice that Barney, plunger, and hat all appear on the breakdown sheet. Of course, I can sort this if I want a little bit better. Um, so that's how linked elements work. So I'm going to show you one more thing about linked elements. Let's go back to the element screen. Now let's say you have attached Barney to a whole bunch of breakdown sheets, um, but of course plunger and hat are not. Um, what you can do is there's a relink button down here. By clicking this button here, and I'll click it real quick just to tell you exactly what it's going to do, this is going to attach all the linked elements specified to the primary linked group, which is this right over here. Um, on all breakdown sheets that currently have the primary element attached. So what it's going to do is it's going to go through all your breakdown sheets, find Barney, and attach these two elements to Barney, to every single breakdown sheet that Barney is in. Now, if Hat is already attached to that particular uh, breakdown sheet or Plunger is already attached to that particular breakdown sheet, it will add it again in terms of the quantity. It'll bring the quantity up, so that's important to note. Okay, so I'm going to cancel that. So that's the importance of linking elements. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to cast um, an, uh, an, an element to a character. Now actually, this is actually in the Info tab, so I'm going to click on the Info tab here, and notice that um, down over here, there is a field called actor cast and cast type. So what I'm going to do now is remember that when we create a screen, uh, import a screenplay from one of our screenplay programs, the characters come in and they are converted to cast members, but actors are not, obviously. Actors are something we need to create in Gorilla, and we're going to go over how to create actors in the contacts module in another lesson. But you can cast elements right here on this particular screen. You could also do it in contacts. So I'm going to show you how to do it here. I'm going to click on the actor cast field over here. Now it says, oh, okay, let me go ahead and select bar. Now if that happens, you just have to select it again. Go ahead and collect cast members. There we go. Now it says select an actor to play the role of Barney. Now since we imported our screenplay, and I haven't gone to the contacts module yet and created any actors, we will have to create some actors right here. So I'm going to click on the green plus button here, and let's go ahead and create an actor. And notice I'm, it just appears here. I can create as many as I want, of course. Now, if I want to cast Barney to a particular actor, you just click on the actor, and notice that the actor name comes in. Now, we've created an actor record in the context module. So if I go to the context module right now, um, I will see the actor record Tom Smith. And I'm not going to do that now. We're going to do that in another lesson. Now down here where it says cast type, this is allows you to create, to uh, um, attach a type to this particular actor. Let's say it's a lead 
or let's say it is a, um, a featured character and you can modify that list by clicking on this little edit button right here and we can create a new uh, cast type if we want we can delete cast types here if we want and we can actually re uh, resort them in a different sort order right now they happen to be sorted by lead supporting feature and character and of course this is going to determine the sort on casting reports as you can see down here okay all right very good that's a wrap have a great shoot